Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Gretchen Peters. She's going to talk about her love of Mickey Newberry's songwriting. I was invited to a party when I had just moved to Nashville. I mean, I, I probably had been in Nashville six months, maybe, and uh, my publisher, or my soon-to-be publisher, lived up in Hendersonville on the lake or near the lake, and that was where all the stars of a certain era in Nashville, like the late 60s, early 70s, if you were like a country music star, you bought a place on the Old Hickory Lake up in Hendersonville. It was, they used to call it like home of the stars or something like that. And so, um, and Mickey had a houseboat on the lake for a time. Um, and he was kind of in this sort of circle that my publisher was in and they they had known each other and and, I got invited to this party and I just could not bring myself to go because I, I, I guess I, when I look back, I think I had just arrived here. I hadn't done anything. I had nothing to show for myself. And here was like one of my absolute biggest heroes. And I would just be meeting him as just a, you know, silly fan, you know, like I wanted to meet him in some way as somebody who had done something that maybe he would like, you know what I mean? Like there was, I just couldn't bring myself to go. And now I, I actually told his wife that story when we, after we released the Mickey Newberry album and I played out in Portland and she came um, and I told her that story and she just laughed in my face. And she's just like, he was the least intimidating person he would have loved you. He was, he was, that's not how he was, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I really kick myself now because I would have loved to have known him. I know loads of people that, that knew him and loved him, but I just, you know, there's something about the feeling that you have about those few people that you put on such a high pedestal like that, that, oh my God, if it doesn't go well, I'll never, I'll never get over it, you know? Um, but I do feel like, you know, even though I didn't know him, I do feel like I, in some way, I knew who he was. And, and Susan, his, his widow, kind of, she kind of affirmed that for me after she heard the album because she's, she's not, she doesn't suffer any fools. And, you know, she, as she told me, there's been a lot of covers of Newberry and most of them aren't that good, you know. I mean, she's very, very straightforward about that. So I was a little nervous, you know, playing her the record, but, um, you know, the best compliment I could have gotten, she said, you get him, you get him, and he would have gotten you, you know, and that's huge. And I think that's because I, there was something that in his songs that deeply resonated with me, like on such a deep level that a, 19 year old hippie chick from Boulder would find something in this redneck from Houston singing country music, which I had never really heard until I was in my late teens. Um, obviously, if that happens, something like that happens, then there's some deeper connection going on, right? Like, that's the only way that happens. And I think. I think it was his, it was two things for me. I think it was his sense of a deep, deep sense of um, a sensitivity to injustice. Like when he saw something that was, that he felt was wrong or unfair, especially, that moved him to write about that. And I've always felt that about myself. I mean, I know that that's like a big driving force for me in terms of what I want to write about. But the other thing is just the, the sheer um, capacity for sadness and pain. Um, and as a cathartic thing, not as, you know, not just like wallowing in it, but I think Mickey really understood on a cellular level that channeling that is, it was cathartic for him, I'm sure. And also for his fans, for listeners, you know, for people that even that weren't even fans of Newberry, but just loved his songs and didn't even know who wrote them. 
there's a huge catharsis that happens. And, you know, you either get that or you don't. I mean, I've found, you know, in my life, in my career, that, you know, the people that get that get me usually, and the people that don't like that move on, and that's totally fine with me. But he he was one of the first artists that I came across in my really, really formative, you know, teenage years that just I was almost like a healer, you know. On, he was just kind of on that level to me, and I really related to it. I understood it, um, and I wanted to do it. I really wanted to be able to to move other people the way he moved me. So I, I, in one sense, I feel like I did know him, at least on a, in a, in a soul sense, you know, 